EVs can be many things, blindingly fast, quiet and comfortable, or for the most part, just plain boring. But not a single person is gonna say that about what we have here today, because this right here, oh my God, it's the Ionic 5N, and it is the best EV I have ever driven because it somehow manages to be fun. Hyundai's N division is just, off the chain, insane. I don't know what they are thinking, giving this to the public, but man, am I ever glad that they did. Let's have a look. The Ionic 5 was already an excellent looking car. We've got these pixel looking headlights here, but it's sort of like you take one of those and a gaming laptop and smash them together. And this is what you get. It's 50 millimeters wider and just so much fiercer looking. We have it in performance blue, which I think looks great. Popping the hood, we can see that there is no frunk, but just loads of motor underneath there and also easy access to your 12 volt battery, which is nice because that's just hidden somewhere stupid in some EVs. Moving around to the side, we have 21 inch forged rims that are wrapped in Pirelli P0s that are 275s. They are freaking massive and you definitely need that given how much power this thing has. And of course, if you're going fast, you need to be stopping fast, which is why we have these massive two piece rotors and some red painted four piston calipers that you know are going to stop you good. Moving to the doors, the handles will do a little wave to you if you so want, but they do have the absolute laziest backup key implementation that I have ever seen. I don't know why I can't go in here. This thing's absolutely massive, but if you need to, it can go in right there. Here we've got a rear air curtain and around the back we have an absolutely massive diffuser. It sticks off the back making this thing 4.7 meters long and popping open the trunk we've got these beautiful cool looking brake lights and a pretty decent amount of storage in here although we don't get any extra bonus storage because down in here we have the subwoofer for our Bose sound system. One place that Hyundai has really enhanced the Ionic 5 for 2025. Oh my God. Would you look at that? It has a rear wiper. It really needed one before. And especially with this massive spoiler that we have here, this thing gets really dirty, really fast. This thing is built on 800 volt architecture, which allows you fast charging from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes, which you'll probably want to do because the rated range of this thing is 355 kilometers. And given how you are going to be driving it, you will be getting less than that, I guarantee you. Also very soon, this should be converted to NACS, but it is not for 2025. So maybe you want to wait a little bit. Popping into the rear seats, you can move them forward if you hate leg room. You can recline them if you wanna be nice and relaxed. Overall, it is quite nice to sit in here. I have plenty of headroom, even though the floor is raised up a little bit, so my legs, they wouldn't hate being a tiny bit lower. We also have two cup holders, two USB-C chargers, and a manual privacy screen if you want to not see any of your haters. Hopping into the driver's seat, we have shockingly good seats. And I mean that in the sense that they are very aggressive bucket seats. They have little holes here so you can put a five point harness in if you are properly tracking this thing. They really hold you in place, full manual. You do not get any seat memory at all, but what you do get is heated and ventilation. The only thing that I wish that they had was some adjustable lumbar support, but it's not like you're going to be sitting in these particularly long given the range of it. That said though, overall, I am super impressed with these seats and I am very happy that they put them in, even if it does feel kind of weird being in this like hardcore bucket seat and then looking around and being like, oh wow, I'm in an SUV that the passengers like a whole arms reach away. <laughs> For the center console, they seem to have just completely given up on the idea of having a bunch of space in the center because probably no one used it anyway. We've got two cup holders down here that you can disappear if you don't want them. We have heaps of chargers, three of them, and 12 volt supply. One thing that is rather annoying is that down here we have a button to change this USB port on the left from data or to just power. And I just hit it all the time by accident. Like, look, you're putting your phone in here and it's just so easy to be like, boop. And if you do that or just break really hard, your Android Auto gets turned off unless you have wireless enabled, which 
I do now, but it was really annoying until I did that extra step. <laughs> if you don't want to be plugged in though, there is a wireless charger that I've never seen work. What does work well is this little storage compartment right here. And we also have a fully functional glove box featuring nothing dumb, which for whatever reason is a plus in an EV. What is kind of dumb though, is everything here, but dumb in the best kind of way. The steering wheel and kind of just the entire car is incredibly confusing. There are so many modes, so many different things to try out, but now I just have it all dialed in and oh my God, is it ever good. We have our N gauge cluster up here. There are different options, but just use this one. It is by far the best. We have our drive mode select, which you are just probably never going to use because we have our N mode select down here which gives you all of the modes that you actually want. Because we have our end mode, then we have our custom one and custom two. Having two customs is great because you can just tell it, turn off my traction control when I press this button. This thing is pretty wild, especially when you have so much power, it will turn those tires into rubber on the road. On the right side of the steering wheel, we have NGB, which stands for N Grin Boost. Gives you an extra 40 horsepower for 10 seconds. And if I am honest, I don't really notice the difference because you are so traction limited anyway. And down here we have a second N button, which enables our fake engine, which <laughs> is really quite a good bit of fun. Also what is quite fun is just playing with the obscene number of settings that they have in their custom menus. One of the things that has really annoyed me with electric cars is the fact that an electric motor is incredibly easy to change how it reacts. You can very easily just go in and change some numbers and be like, wow, the whole feeling of driving is completely different now. But for the most part, everyone is just like, here's one drive mode. Maybe you get to enable creep or not. It is very disappointing that they go with it just being super easy when it could be incredibly customizable for the people that want to. And oh my God, do they ever give you a lot of options in here. So looking at the main menu, we have N torque distribution that allows you to change how much of the power is being sent to the front and the back. We also have our N pedal, which allows you to have up to 0.6 Gs of regenerative braking. Now this right here does have a little warning on it saying to only use it on the track. And for the most part, I have gotten very used to just ignoring warnings like that, but man, you have to be careful when end pedal is on. They are not kidding that it really transfers the weight to those front wheels. And if you're not paying attention, it will catch you out. We also have end race right here, which provides better cooling to the batteries and more current duration, although it might cause a bit of degradation to your batteries. Oh well, and we have N Drift Optimizer, which I have not been playing around with because we have not been on a track. In here, we also have N Battery, which allows you to have drag mode, which will increase the temperature of your battery a little bit so that it is absolutely optimal for just ripping down the straights. And we also have track mode, which is more for cooling your battery so you can be on the gas really hard for longer. Coming into here, we have two custom modes where you can just change all types of things. We also have launch control, which we will see in a second. This being a very silly car, you're able to choose what type of a sound you want your fake engine to have. So here it's kind of like a normal Hyundai four cylinder in their end vehicles evolution. It's more like a strange electric race car and supersonic is an even stranger electronic race car of sorts. It is all very good fun, but if you don't want it, no, yeah, there it is, completely gone. Also in here, the infotainment is just typical Hyundai, Kia sort of stuff and very easy to use. For the most part, I am just slapping an Android Auto, got a nice big 12.3 inch screen right here and it all works great. We also have not physical climate controls, but they all stay in the same place so you can get used to it well enough and plenty of physical controls for volume, tuning, setup, all that sort of stuff. I have had no problems with just using this car overall. It is excellent for just daily use if you want to be an absolute hooligan or just comfortable on your way to work. Oh, Andy, do you know what I think the business team would really love? If this is how we segue to our sponsor, 
Drop. Thanks to Drop for sponsoring this video. Their Hex Gaming headset in collaboration with EPOS is a budget-friendly option that works with PCs and consoles. Its closed back build treats your ears to a clean, isolated soundstage for in-game cues. And it has a lift to mute microphone so your friends don't have to hear your dog barking in the background anymore. Once you're done gaming for the day, you can hang your headphones on the EPOS GSA 50 headphone hanger, which can conveniently attach to the side of your desk. Get 20% off the Drop Plus EPOS Hex Gaming headset today using the link down in the description. All right, let's go in here and launch control, activate. Don't break my neck. <laughs> yeah, foot on the brake, foot on the gas. Oh my God. This thing has a zero to 60 of three seconds and is able to accomplish that by having 641 horsepower 406 of which is directed just to the rear wheels. Let's just have a little taste of this orange NGB button and just, oh my God. I really like the sound of this thing. It's like a Dremel or an electric toothbrush on steroids when you hit it. Like that's the actual sound of the electric motors. And it's just, oh. <laughs> This thing is brutally fast. It is quite funny because when you don't have a whole lot of grip on the road that you're in, it feels a lot like a high power front wheel drive car. You kind of get torque steer and it's trying to steer you off into the ditch. It is hilarious. Speaking of very funny, let's just dip into the gears here. This has a simulated eight speed dual clutch. So we can come in here and drop into second gear and go all the way down, turn my cap around. And I am now a Honda driver. I am driving my Honda excellently and this is exactly how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> For real though, this, this is a lot of fun. It is shockingly convincing that you have an actual engine and exhaust and stuff. Like, I know that it is not real, but at the same time, I don't particularly care. Like, have you ever had fun in a racing game before? It is a very similar thing to this, and it is quite a bit of fun. Oh. Now, of course, is it as good as a real engine and exhaust? No, of course it isn't. But it is absolutely comical. And if you are done having fun like that, you can just press this button and wow, it just is completely silent in here. One of my favorite things about this is that you can soften the dampers up. It'll be just really nice, comfortable for your drive to work. And then you hit some corners and be like, oh, look at this. It steers so well. Oh my God. For an electric car, the handling of this is shocking. Oh. It is so much more fun than it deserves to be. And it is so much more competent at being, oh, at being best at both of what it is able to do. Something like the Polestar 2 is incredibly fast and incredibly brutal and incredibly competent in the corners, but it's never able to just be an easy family cruiser like we are in right now. Whereas this right here, I feel like it knows that it is a great big electric SUV. It has that sort of luxury feeling to it, but it also is just so absolutely comical. Drifting the Taycan was a whole lot of fun, but you can't do that on normal roads. That thing is so fast that you just immediately get impounded. This is also brutally fast. But with the gears and all of that stuff, you can have fun on normal roads and like really toss it around. I love it. I love this thing. It has so much personality. Once you're done listening to your simulated engine, maybe you want to listen to some excellent music. And this right here definitely has that. 
In here we have the eight speaker sound system from Bose and it sounds really freaking good. We've got two speakers in the doors, two tweeters up there and a center channel. You also have that sub in the back and two rear speakers, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's not the number of speakers that counts. It's what they can do. And man, this sounds excellent. I measured it and it goes all the way down to 30 hertz, so you have plenty of bass, and even though it does look a bit exaggerated, around 100 to 200 hertz, it sounds very clear and very good. Now, of course, if you want to be headbanging to your music instead of looking at the road, we have Hyundai's typical suite of fantastic driver assistance. We have our cruise control here, which just works really well, like everything else that they make. It has excellent ability to just see something in front of you, slow down, stop. I have plenty of confidence in it. It also will have lane centering, which is pretty good, but I personally prefer to just drive my own cars. And it's gonna be safe. It has the safety crap, and if you don't want it, you can just fully turn it off and you can run into the person in front of you on the racetrack if you so choose. So overall, this thing is just comical in ways I did not know an EV could be. There's stuff like the Taycan and the Lucid Air, which will scare you with their speed, but do you know what you can't do in those? Have a hilarious little gearbox that won't let you keep on going, even though the powertrain can, just because it's funny. This thing is such a great little machine and for 66 grand US, I think if you have the money, just do it. It's, it's so freaking good. Like compared to a Model Y performance, the amount of fun that I have in this thing, not to mention the fact that it's really a more comfortable ride when it wants to be, this is the easiest pick ever for me. I really wish we could take this thing on track. It would be hilarious. And I also wish I could take you to the end of this video. Wait, I did. Huge thanks for watching. Hit like, get subscribed, and just have a great old day.